This is the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola in the Narrowgate Security Agency Studios. They will strike again. This will continue, and they will continue to play upon our leaders' naivete, their political correctness, their stupidity. And uh, it, unfortunately, the, the innocent American citizen will be the victim. It's been well over a month now since the terrorist attack in Orlando. Some have stopped talking about what happened at Pulse nightclub, instead focusing on other attacks in the world. But we don't want people to forget. Instead, we want all Americans, gay or straight, to remember that horrific night and be ready to defend themselves going forward. Today, Jeanette McCoy is here for a candid interview. She was at Pulse the night of the ambush and, by the grace of God, survived. But now, Jeanette is suffering the effects of what she saw and heard. Stay tuned for an emotional and raw talk with Pulse Attack survivor Jeanette McCoy on Mama Grizzly Radio. Sarah Palin offers words of advice to Mike Pence and his family. A brand new installment of Liberty and Legacy with Tamara Colbert is on the way from Texas. And Sarah Steelman has the latest edition of Steel Resolve in Missouri. Welcome to the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. The Palin Update is sponsored by Narrowgate Security Agency. Learn more at narrowgate.com. The terror attack in Orlando, Florida, sent shockwaves throughout the nation and the world. A gay club was attacked by an Islamic jihadist. He chose a nightclub knowing people would be unarmed and unable to protect themselves. Along with victims who lost their lives, there are also victims that are alive but are dealing with the post-traumatic stress of that horrific night. Jeanette McCoy, a top athlete who I've covered over the years, was at Pulse when the attack occurred. She is alive and moving forward. But it's a very difficult process. We're honored to have her with us today. And right now, we're so happy to be joined by Jeanette McCoy on the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Jeanette, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, Kevin. Appreciate that. Now, I know it's been over a month now, and people are talking about a lot of other things. And unfortunately, there have been a lot uh, more killings across not only the United States, but... In other countries, we're seeing the unrest in so many places and, and, you know, we can talk about the politics of it, uh, you know, from now until November, but let's talk about uh, the good news. You're here with us today and here with us, uh, you know, at all. And so are uh, uh, some of your friends that were in Pulse the night that this happened last month at the nightclub when a uh, terrorist attack took place and uh, so many lost their lives. First of all, again, we're just so happy you're okay. But Jeanette, let's, uh, I don't want people to forget. I, I want them to know the horror that went on that night so we can remember. And not only as we pray for Orlando and hope for, you know, things to, uh, you know, get better for those directly affected. We want people to know what we're up against. So, so first of all, uh, w- what were you doing at Pulse that night? And, and, and tell us how things unfolded. Um, well, Kevin, you know, as as you are aware, I am part of the uh, the LGBT community. I am uh, a gay female, and um, you know, Pulse was um, a club that I you know always went to. You know, I went Saturday nights. Um, you know, it's Latin night. I love to salsa dance. So, you know, anytime I wanted to go out and have a good time, of course, I went to Pulse. It was it's, it's a community club. You know, you have a lot of regulars there. So, um, actually, at that time, I was actually feeling down. And it was a last minute thing. You know, I asked my brother to come out with me who's straight and uh, my other friend of mine um, who's straight as well, along with a couple of my gay friends. And we were just supposed to enjoy the night. I just wanted to have a drink and kind of relax a little bit. I was going through some stuff with with, with my girlfriend at the time. And, um, you know, I I, I knew where to go. And uh, the the night was going great. We had a great time. We were were going across, you know, to, to the patio into the main floor, the Latin side, and then they had another side, which is the hip hop side. And, you know, it just, the, the, the night went well. And then it was last call for alcohol. And um, <laughs> at that time, Angel Cologne was standing right next to me. And, and at, we, we were all together by the main bar at, at the corner uh, station of the bar. And, you know, I, I danced with Angel and, you know, told him how much I loved him at that moment and turned right to Juan um, Orego, who was the uh, bartender. And, you know, wanted to get my uh, my last drink of the night. And that's when the horrific event uh, pretty much started. Um, just the, 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 the sounds, uh, the, the gunshots. Um, that, that's something that continues to play in my head every single day, Kevin. It's, it's something that has been extremely difficult. And, um, you know, my, my automatic reaction is I'm hearing, I'm hearing the gunshots. And for me personally, 
I, I knew they were gunshots. For some people, some people were thinking, oh, maybe it's part of the song, or uh, some people who haven't heard gunshots before, they, they really weren't, you know, too sure. And um, right from the beginning, um, I felt, I felt the power of, of the rifle. Um, I, I definitely, I, you, you can tell it was a mil- military rifle. And um, as I started to turn around, I started to kneel and turn around. And um, you see people either uh, going down because they want to duck or people were actually going down because they were getting shot. In the process of me turning around, I had a lady who was standing next to me. And as I'm bending down to turn around to see what's going on, I see as she gets shot and I turn around and all I see is a man walking towards pretty much everybody in the club and he just wouldn't stop. Boom, boom, boom. The, the, the bullets were coming so fast. And I could, the, the image of the barrel of the gun and the fire coming out from as the bullets were, were flying, it was terrifying. It was complete chaos at that moment. It was literally like a war zone. Um, and I knew at that moment, I knew where I wanted to exit. I knew I wanted to get out of the building and I knew what direction I was going. So I went to my right side to head towards the patio. Um, and at that moment, uh, Angel, you know, goes and we're, we're trying to go and, He kind of pushes me, and I actually fall to the floor. I don't go to the ground. I fall to the floor, and I'm trying to get up. And now everyone is just climbing on top of each other. People are getting shot, and we're just trying to go. And at that moment, I'm watching as people are getting shot. And, Kevin, I just start telling myself that I'm going to get shot. And I'm sorry for getting emotional, but, you know, it still plays in my head. I, I prepared myself to get shot because I watched so many people get shot. And I just told myself, if I get shot in my arm, if I get shot in my leg, I'm going to be okay as long as I get out the building. And somehow through all the chaos and going over people and, um, you know, you feel all the debris, you feel the power of the bullets. Um, so many people were getting shot around me when I finally make it out to the patio. Uh, the fence is down. The fence, they somehow, who you know, the people who were well, well ahead of me knocked the fence down. And at that moment, anger starts setting in when I finally get out of the building. And people who are running north um, on Orange Avenue and some on south, which is where Pulse is. Uh, and I start running. And as I'm running, by the time I got out of there, Kevin, he had already shot at least 100 shots were already fired at that time, and there was never a break. I mean, the the breaks were so minimal for him to change his clips, and my anger then started to take over, survival mode. You know, my brother was no longer with me. I couldn't find anyone. I came out, and I was by myself, and my automatic reaction was to come towards the front of the building because, Kevin, I was so angry. I was so, had so many mixed emotions and I wanted this guy dead. That was my feelings. I said, who would come in here? When I was inside of the club, when everything happened, did I think, oh, ISIS or terrorist attack? No, I didn't. I thought hate crime. This is a gay club. You don't see this at Pulse. You don't see in the, in the gay clubs in Orlando, they're very, very non-threatening. They don't have security like you would in a regular straight club. We don't even get pat down. They're great places. They're great environments. And even a lot of straight people go to these clubs because they have a good time. They watch shows. I brought straight friends there. And um, out of all that anger, I come to the front part of the building. And now I want to go in because I no longer have anyone with me. And I start screaming at the cops and I'm telling them, go in. The cops didn't go in. By the time I got out, Kevin, there was already so many cops out there. There was tons of cops all over the place, tons of cop cars. And I start going towards the entranceway and I'm screaming at the cops, telling them, go in, go in. You have an active shooter. He remained an active shooter. One of the police officers who happened to be a Hispanic male starts pushing me back, telling me to get away. All this time, gunshots are just, they continue. Then I was there when they got into a little small gun spat with the, um, with the shooter, which didn't last not even 30 seconds. It was about six officers by the entranceway. And once they started to shoot, it didn't last long, and then they started to retreat back. And then that's when my anger, I I, I became even more enraged. I I couldn't understand how they were not going in when you had an active shooter. And they continued to pull me back and everything else like that. And I realized that, obviously, I wasn't shot. And what was within my innate nature to do is to start helping those around me. Now I finally see Juan, who was my, my friend, who's a bartender, who was standing right in front of me, he shot. And, you know, naturally I start taking off my shirt and I start using my shirt as a tunic to start tying and ripping it up and tying it around people's uh, limbs. 
uh, in regard, you know, because of the certain gunshots and everything else. And now my brother finally calls me and things are kind of little by little coming together um, in regards to where my family is. Uh, my friend, he was still stuck in there for another 35 minutes. But, you know, to have to go through something so horrific, Kevin, I, there's so many feelings that I have. I cry every day. There's a lot of things that I have to deal with. Hearing any sound to me um, knocks on my door. It's, it's very alarming for me. I'm not, I'm not in a settled state right now. Um, and day by day, I, I try, I try to set small goals just to kind of get through the day. Um, you know, I am a person who, um, practices my constitutional right to bear, uh, to bear arms. And I do own a gun in my home, but to all of a sudden have media come knocking at your door constantly. That was so hard for me as well, because I literally would have my gun and I would tell them, why are they showing up at my house? Like, not right now. I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready because any noise, it just, it just I, I couldn't understand why they needed to do something like that versus call me, especially when I was, you know, inside this club and any noise has completely messed with my life. Um, but it's, it's an event that unfortunately, as these things continue around the world, people are forgetting about Orlando. They are forgetting about Pulse. And as the media dies down in Orlando, um, the lives that have been affected uh, the PTSD that's going to occur within Orlando is going to be massive, Kevin, because now when nobody's around and we have to be home by ourselves or, you know, shut our lights off or whatever the case may be, that's where the struggle is really, really going to begin, just like it has for many of us um, who have been inside that club. Um, so, I mean, it's, Kevin, it's something that I'm just trying to, um, you know, each day uh, live with and somehow try to find uh, something within myself to continue to fight and uh, to continue to stay focused, especially with what I do as as a trainer, as a fitness professional. But um, I have my good days and I have my bad days. Um, and Kevin, you know, one thing that I have to say is since Pulse, I have not been able to sleep with the lights off in, in my home. And something that is so small and it, it becomes very frustrating to me that I I literally have a prep talk with myself and tell myself, what is the big deal? And I can't have the light off for more than 10 seconds. And it's because when everything happened, it was dark inside the club. And when things happened, it happened right behind me. So I, I need to see what's going on, even in my own home. And I have a taser and I have a gun that I had literally at my bedside. And to, to, to live your life like that and you try to see if you find any type of normalcy, but there really isn't, not with a tragic event and something um, to this degree. It really, really does change you, Kevin. It really does. Well, I mean, you make a great point as far as the aftermath here. We talk about people who obviously lost their lives or those who were physically injured. But, I mean, you know, those that don't know Jeanette, not only does she uh, carry a gun, a law-abiding citizen with a gun, but she is a fitness pro. She is a trainer. She is a former football player who I used to cover. And, yes, she played football. And this is someone who is still having trouble turning the lights off to go to sleep. So you can imagine someone who isn't as strong physically and mentally as you, uh, what they will be going through as well. So we're not going to let people forget, no matter what happens anywhere else in this country or uh, in other countries or what's going on with these attacks. Uh, and that's why we wanted you on so far removed from it happening, because we are going to remember what happened at Pulse. And, you know, you look at the cowardly nature of all of this um you mentioned the club itself how it was a place that people felt so relaxed so safe no pat downs yeah and let's make no mistake that's why you were one of the targets we see the so the countries that are hit the the schools yes. that are hit the states that are hit and here in this particular venue you know this guy knew it's sitting ducks and it and it, and it makes it even you know not that you could get more disgusting but it just puts it that one notch above of the whole cowardice of it all Absolutely. And, you know, Kevin, uh, a friend of mine who, uh, you know, served in the military, did several tours uh, in Iraq and everything, you know, he, he mentioned it to me and he, he put it greatly. And, and I've said this before and to, to friends and everything, you know, he said one thing about us being in the military is that, you know, when we went overseas, he says even a surprise attack was not a surprise. He said, you know, we prepared ourselves, but the way that you guys were unarmed, unprepared, 
He says, let me explain something to you, Jeanette. He says, get help. He goes, do not try to be that tough person. I know that you've always been a tough ind- individual. He goes, but I didn't get help. And he goes, and I suffer from, you know, PTSD, and it's more severe than I have ever, ever thought in my entire life to the point where he thinks about committing suicide. And to think of that degree, and he says, you know what, Jeanette? He says, simply put, he goes, some people lost their lives that night. He goes, but the people who survived this attack and the people who saw what happened inside that building, he said, unfortunately, Jeanette, you can never hold a funeral service for what you guys lost mentally. And he's absolutely right, because what we have to go through on a day-by-day basis, the ups and downs, it's such an emotional roller coaster. And, And I just ask that, you know, people who have friends or family who were involved in this to, to kind of stick, you know, stick by them, um, understand there's going to be good and bad. And it's unfortunate that things continue to happen all over the world. And, you know, Kevin, you know, what really, really bothers me, what really bothers me is that as things continue around this world, Pulse has been completely forgotten because till this day, we haven't heard one 911 call. We haven't seen one video surveillance about what happened that night. But yet we see what happens in Istanbul, but we can see on on TV about the guy blowing himself up and we see all this stuff. But in Pulse, all you're hearing are the stories of the survivors. But we're, we're left with unanswered questions and doubt. And a sense of, you know, feeling that, you know, we're, we're American citizens, but we still don't have any answers. I lack confidence in federal and state agencies. I lack confidence in our Orange County Police Department. I really, really do, Kevin, because the magnitude of this and how we've been left behind, it is absolutely not only sad, but it's very sickening to me. Very sickening. You saw the shooter? I mean, you saw this guy's face? You know, Kevin, unfortunately, I didn't see his face. I did see the barrel of the gun because when you have a high-powered rifle shooting your way and shooting at every direction and just the power, and I've been to, to you know, the gun range. Like I said, I own a gun, so I know the power. But when you have a military rifle, there's a certain section that they put you in inside a gun range because of the power from it. Now, we were his targets. So for me, when I bent and turned around, the only thing that I was looking at was the gun because you saw nothing but the fire coming out of it, the yeah. sparks from each bullet. So did I sit there and look at his face? No, I didn't have time for that. All I had time for was to get into survival mode and figure out how was I going to go ahead and get out of this place. You know, you talk about people forgetting about it. Well, they can't forget about it if we keep talking about it. And and a lot of the mainstream right. media, like you, you are right. They are ignoring it because it doesn't fit a narrative that they want to pursue. Uh, you know, there's groups that the mainstream media loves to prop up. And, and you know what? The, mm-hmm. the gay and lesbian community is one of them at times. But when it comes to not calling a particular incident what it really is, well, then they're going to leave anybody out to dry that they need to. And, and I don't think this particular Pulse situation fits a narrative. And here you are, uh, a, a woman who has a gun legally. Now, what about those in, in the gay and lesbian community? You know, like you said, there were no pat downs. A lot of people are there, you know, unarmed. Are you finding, because I know the numbers are showing this, and I know a lot of people I've talked to personally are saying this, but what about you who are out there and have a lot of friends, uh, not only in Florida, but wherever, uh, are more people uh, exercising that Second Amendment right and learning how to shoot? Well, well, yeah, you know, it, it's funny because people really, really do um, yearn for that. Now, here's the thing, Kevin, after all this happened, I took the class to, t- to, to get my concealed weapons license. And why? Because my mentality is that I never, ever want to be in a situation that I have my friends or my family or not only that, Kevin, but I'm also a mother. I have a 13-year-old son. I don't want to be at the bowling alley or the movie theater. And if something like that is ever to occur, and I can't do anything about it. Because that day, Kevin, if I had some type of concealed weapons license, though you cannot have it inside the club because that is illegal. But if I would have had some type of weapon, I would have sat there and I would have protected myself and Mm -hmm. those around me. Mm -hmm. So are people being more aware in regards to, you know what, well, maybe, unfortunately, the world that we live in and the society that we live in, it's important to go ahead and protect yourself. It it goes beyond the LGBT community. And, you know, with all this stuff, you know, presidency coming in, all these campaigns and you know, people tell me, well, Jeanette, how do you feel about the love that you guys are getting all around the world? And, you know, Kevin, my mentality is this. Um, 
it feels great that we're getting the love, but here's the thing. People are having a reactive approach to the LGBT community. They're not having a proactive approach because if they really cared about the LGBT community, they would do things that would bring the, LBG, uh, the LGBT community and others together to get an understanding. But now people are reacting because of what happened in Pulse. People in political powers are trying to somehow use that as some type of political gain. Mm -hmm. And that is unfair to use people of the LGBT community or victims in a way to go ahead and so that you can proceed in your political campaign. So do I feel all the love? Actually, Kevin, some parts I do, but in other parts, I absolutely do not. Well, I, I don't. I'm I, sorry. I agree with you. And, and, and it's not like we haven't seen it before. They did it in Sandy Hook with children. And now, like you said, doing it with the mm -hmm. gay and lesbian community. I, look, um, I got to tell you, I, I, I'm very, you know, taken aback by the things you're saying because uh i you know i could see some people shutting down completely and and the fact that you are feeling these horrible things with the lights on and and loud noises and everything else but you're still doing your thing and you're still and that's the best thing you could do you know one foot in front of the other and you know keep keep moving forward and and you know we know that this attack too is not just an attack on the gay and lesbian community it's an attack on all of america and and and, Absolutely. and people need to understand that and not forget and we're not going to let them forget uh jeanette and and and, and we're going to do that through you and through some of the heroes in the club that you named that night you know through these uh you know attacks like this there's always a great stories of heroism and and this is no different right. but um as we move forward uh uh, you know, we're praying for you. We're thinking about you and, and, uh, and all of your friends that were affected, whether directly or indirectly. And, and we hope that as we do move forward, if we want to uh, talk to you again, that you'll join us again. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I definitely will. And, you know, it is it really is about moving forward. Um, if I don't set goals, um, if I don't move forward, then I, I'm going to be in a situation where I will be depressed. And, you know, we, we all go through tragic events in our lives. And um, it's about when we go through it, how is it that we're going to continue on? And, and that's what I keep telling myself is, you know, give myself a reason to fight. I have a son. I have a show that I was about not to do. But I realized that if I don't do this, then then what? What 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 am I going to be fighting for? You know, so there's certain things that I have got to do, you know, and I, my, I have my show coming up uh, on the 27th of August and I have a certain themed wear as a diva uh, fitness uh, pro. Uh, there's a certain piece that I'm going to actually dedicate to Orlando. I will have the LGBT uh, flag or pride flag with the pulse symbol. That's going to be a part of my theme wear because I have to fight for us. I really do. I'm sorry. No, you're. Hey, listen. Uh, we're upset, and you were in this. You, you, you have all the right to get as emotional as you want. And if you don't like her doing it, she'll knock you out because you should see this woman. But anyway, uh, yes, tell yes. us uh, how can people find out more about that and check out your shows? Their website. Um. Yeah. Um. Everyone can check out our WBFF shows. Uh, dot com. Um. It's it's a pro show. It's going to be in Toronto, Canada. It is actually my pro debut. Um, it's a really big show and everyone, you know, can kind of check me out. You know, I'm always on Facebook, Instagram, you know, Jeanette McCoy, W, uh, BFF Pro. And all I try to do is inspire people on a daily basis. I do a lot of live things to let people know how I'm doing on a day by day basis, even after polls um, to try to uh, uh, sit. It's, it's become very, very therapeutic for me to kind of speak about it. Um, I, I don't want to hold anything in. I don't want to be that type of individual, but I want to be able to talk about it in a way that I can um you know, uh, inspire other people and just let my emotions out, whether I cry or laugh or get angry. I, I, I have to be able to express these feelings and to just have people listen to it. Um, I, you know, I'm just very, very appreciative for, you know, everyone and, and everyone's love and support that I've received thus far. Well, Jenna, thank you again so much and all the best to you and uh, to, to the heroes you mentioned, to Angel and, and to your friends. Uh, please, best regards to everyone. Thank you so much, Kevin. Really appreciate it. For more on Jeanette McCoy, visit her Facebook page, Jeanette McCoy, WBFF Pro. The Donald Trump Mike Pence ticket is official following last week's RNC in Cleveland. Governor Palin knows a thing or two about running for vice president, and she's offering advice to Pence and his family. Palin writing on Facebook, congratulations, Pence family. Illegitimi non carborundum. In this clash of civilizations, the courageous, unrelenting fight for America's future is beyond paramount. 
If eyes are not open to this after the latest Islamic attack, then one may be hopelessly lost in the fake utopian world into which the left sucks the gullible. Congratulations to Governor Mike Pence on being chosen to run for vice president. Pence is an accomplished Indiana politician with decades of politics under his belt. He is a devoted family man, and he is a gentleman. He will serve well as Trump's partner, Trump's second in command. Common sense independent patriots must now be wholly united and involved in this election process, recognizing the nation's enemies hell-bent on decimating us militarily and economically. It's wise to insist gentlemanly politics to take a back seat to the fighting warrior spirit that must drive all our leaders in this upcoming epic battle for America's security, solvency, and sovereignty. A GOP team is now set to win that battle through strengthening our military, our Supreme Court, our balance sheet, and our common resolve to finally put America first. Congratulations to the Pence family. Stand your ground and fight alongside your dad through the coming months and years of scrutiny. Illegitimi non carborundum. To see any of the governor's posts in their entirety, visit Sarah Palin's Facebook page, follow her on Twitter at Sarah Palin USA, and check out SarahPack.com. Now, the Palin Update with Kevin Shola presents Liberty and Legacy. Here's Tamara Colbert. A single candidate cannot save America. Our problems are just way too big. And besides, our founders didn't set up our Constitution for a single monarch-style ruler, but rather distributed power among the... A single candidate cannot save America. Our problems are just way too big. And besides, our founders didn't set up our Constitution for a single monarch-style ruler, but rather distributed power among the three branches of the federal government and the states, with the fourth branch of of the federal government being we the people as the guardians of liberty. Well, here's the deal. The Convention of States Project has people joining in record numbers right now. Why is that? Because through this election cycle, the one thing that's become evidently clear is that a single candidate is absolutely not going to be the only way that we can go to save our nation. I'm not going to ever surrender, nor will I accept the direction of socialism, progressivism, Marxism, or tyranny. I want to live free. And I love the fact the Convention of States Project and Article 5 is the original anti-establishment choice for saving America. But along those lines, I still would be remiss if I didn't touch upon the Republican convention that I watched this week in earnest. I mean, all the new faces, what I heard, and what the nominee had to say about his vision for America. Wow, I was truly overwhelmed in a good way. It really was inspiring for me personally. And I, I, in my mind, I'm drawing a huge dramatic contrast to what the Democrats will present at their convention next week. I appreciated seeing all these new, unfamiliar faces, not of famous people, but ordinary Americans, the people who make up the fabric of our nation from avocado farmers to professional golfers who had a dream for more than just golf, business women, men, business women who employ thousands of Americans who are the backbone of the American economy. And of course, I just loved seeing our military heroes recount their battle stories and share with us their insights of anguish and victory that has helped shape them into who they are now. I was really thrilled to see the former space shuttle commander, a woman who talked about her love of adventure in space, while reminding us that America was founded as a nation of explorers and adventurers. Of course, America's mayor, Rudy Giuliani, loved that man. His deep-rooted love for this nation, affection for Donald Trump, and his, his just unacceptable stance on the trashing of the rule of law in our Constitution. I cannot wait to see what kind of a role he's going to have in a Trump administration. But And since my show is Liberty and Legacy, the legacy I saw that Donald Trump has created goes far beyond the buildings or golf resorts, but it resides in his children. Holy cow, what a great job he's done. Then, of course, Chris Christie's prosecution of Hillary. Whoa, folks, if there was The most important thing that came out of that is the sobering reminder that we need to restore the rule of law and quickly. The pastors, future legislators, and so on. 
I gotta say, this was the first convention that I've watched since 1980 where I saw more average Americans than famous political figures. And quite frankly, that's how it should be. I loved it. I loved the theme. Something new every night. Let's make America safe again. Let's make America work again. Let's make America one again. Yes, let's make America win again. Winning is great. I love winning. And Trump is right. We don't win anymore. But let's see. How did we get off track? We were winning when Ronald Reagan was president. But then we had H.W. Bush, who said, read my lips, and ended up as a one-termer. The Clintons used us, used the system to get rich and famous, and tied wealth and influence into their power grab, which they launched in earnest following Bill's departure as president. W pushed the envelope of big government to new heights and then pushed the Republicans out of the House majority in 2006, opening the door for the wrong kind of change, like Obamacare, massive debt and spending, executive branch, o o branch overreach, and so much more. Obama took that overreach to the moon. He hasn't stopped, folks. He's got five more months left. Even when the people, we the people, return the Republican majority to the House and Senate, Big government Republicans gave Obama every single thing he wanted. And this guy has a strategy of leading from behind, which I think is really political doublespeak for I'm incapable of leading because A, I don't know how. I'm only a community organizer and I haven't organized anything bigger than eight square blocks. So here we are. This has all gotten us to this moment. One of the most amazing and exciting political seasons in the history of our nation. And that leads us to the ultimate anti-establishment candidate in Do Donald J. Trump. He really was serendipity to the people's ears because we want our power back. We're tired of ha Washington having it. We're tired of the gridlock on Capitol Hill and the 80,000 pages annually of new legislations that continue to build on the previous year's 80,000 plus pages of legislation and so on. I want to decide. We the people want to decide. And for Republicans, that decision includes history, making the first true outsider candidate our next president. The Democrat convention contrast will paint the picture of Americans as bad, our country as terrible and in decline, that it's time to take away our guns and put more restrictions on liberty and promote the biggest confiscation and transfer of wealth and prosperity from hardworking Americans to those who do nothing but believe that they are entitled to everything for free and don't have to work for it. Those lies have been perpetuated by the race and hate baiters in our nation. Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, President Obama, Michelle Obama, and so on. You are wrong. This is not the nation we want. And you are going to watch the people reclaim it. Donald Trump can't do it by himself, folks. You and I, we must get involved. The only way to restore the rule of law and the Constitution is by using Article 5 to get the states together to have a stake in the nation's future. That means if our states are meeting and talking about solving real problems, everybody on Capitol Hill is going to stink and wake up. And if our states are doing it, you and I are involved at the state level. And that is is exciting. That means you and I get to play the biggest and most important part in restoring the Constitution and the rule of law and reclaiming the liberty and legacy that is ours. I love that. This is absolutely the best position we could be in. I would love to know what you thought of the RNC convention and what we're going to see this week at the Democrat convention. You can tweet me at Tamara Colbert, hashtag Mama Grizzly. And for Mama Grizzly Radio, I'm Tamara Colbert. Have a blessed week. Tamara Colbert in Texas. Tune in for more Liberty and Legacy next week. And to learn about Convention of States, head to conventionofstates.com. Now our weekly commentary, Steel Resolve. Here's Sarah Steelman. Thanks, Kevin. The Associated Press reported this week that key restrictions on Iran's nuclear program imposed under a secret add-on provision in the Iranian agreement will ease restrictions years before the 15-year deal expires. 
This advances Iran's ability to build a bomb even before the end of the pact. According to the document, Iran can start replacing its mainstay centrifuges with thousands of advanced machines in January of 2027. Centrifuges churn out uranium to levels that can range from use as reactor fuel to much higher levels for the core of a nuclear warhead. Because these new machines are more effective, they will allow Iran to enrich at more than twice the rate it is doing now. The AP reported that based on a comparison of outputs between the old and newer machines, if the enrichment rate doubles, that breakout time would be reduced to six months or even less if the efficiency is more than double, a possibility the document actually allows for. The easing of restrictions on the number and kind of centrifuges means that once the deal expires, Iran will be positioned to quickly make enough highly enriched uranium to bring up its stockpile to a level that would allow it to make a bomb in half a year should it choose to do so. Just as I and many others suspected, this deal is no deal at all for the United States or Israel. Perhaps if Donald Trump becomes president, we can dump this dangerous deal. This is Sarah Steelman for Mama Grizzly Radio. Tune in again next week for another segment of Steel Resolve right here on the Palin Update. The Palin Update, including Liberty and Legacy and Steel Resolve, is on demand and available for download. So just head to mamagrizzlyradio.com, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Visit mamagrizzlyradio.com for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. Also, like Mama Grizzly Radio on Facebook and follow along on Twitter at Mama Grizz Radio, at Kevin Shola, at Tamara Colbert, and at Sarah underscore Steelman. And I'm doing some writing for Breitbart News. Go to Breitbart.com and search Kevin Shola. I want to thank Sarah Steelman, Tamara Colbert, and everyone here at Mama Grizzly Radio. Thanks to Jeanette McCoy, and thank you for listening today. A special thanks to our sponsor, Narrowgate Security Agency. Visit Narrowgate.com. The Palin Update is produced by Lena Anderson, the Andy L. Kramer, and Lorianne Lewis. Please be sure to join us again next time for another edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.